Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 2 Biology Area Study 1. Today we are going to be looking at chromosomes and genomes. So in terms of this um, area of study, we are going to be looking at genes, alleles and genomes. We're going to be looking at um, homo homologous chromosomes and what they are. We're going to be looking at what um, makes a chromosome in terms of its size and how that differs in different organisms. We're going to be looking at karyotypes and what that is and we're going to be looking at um, the production of haploid gametes through the process of meiosis. So we'll make a start. In terms of some vocab that you will need to be familiar with, um, a genome is basically the complete set of DNA that's contained within a haploid set of an organism's chromosome. So a gene, it's a section of DNA that carries the code. So we know that DNA is made up of A, T, Cs, and G, so adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, and it makes up the genetic code for who we are. A gene is a section of that DNA, okay? And then an allele is what we call an alternate form of a gene. So we might have a gene for, say, eye color, and then an allele would be the alternate forms that we can have, so maybe brown eyes and blue eyes, as an example. In terms of DNA, we need to know that it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, and it is basically made up of what we call these base pairs. So those ATCGs are our nitrogenous bases. A binds with T um, with two hydrogen bonds and C binds with G with three hydrogen bonds. Um, and it forms what we call a double-stranded nucleic acid chain. So in terms of the structure that makes up one DNA nucleotide, it contains a phosphate group, okay, which you can see here. It contains a deoxyribose sugar, and then it contains that nitrogenous base, and they will form that double helix together. In terms of a chromosome, a chromosome is just coiled up DNA, okay? It's very tightly wound, and we call homologous chromosomes basically sitting as a pair, okay? So each of the 23 chromosomes that are found within a nucleus, okay, we get one set from our mum and one set from our dad, they line up to be homologous. And for a chromosome to be homologous, they have to be the same size and the same length. They have to have the centromere position at the same location. So the centromere is that middle, um, the center of that chromosome. And they have to share the same genes at the same gene loci. So we have in our sex chromosomes, 23 chromosomes, but all of our other cells will contain 46 chromosomes, half of that from mum, half of that from dad. Um, you may also come across the word autosome. Autosomes are any chromosomes number 1 to 22 that are not your sex chromosome. And then your sex chromosomes are the ones that are going to identify whether you are genetically male or female. So um, if you have two X chromosomes, you are female. If you have two Y chromosomes, you are genetically male. In terms of understanding chromosome structure, we understand that this central um, point may not be exactly in the center, but this point is called the centromere. And then we have our long arm and our short arm. And one half of a centromere, so say this left side here, we would call that a chromatid. Okay, so one chromosome is made up of two chromatids. And there's going to be chromosomal variations across all um, species. So different animals will have different numbers of chromosomes in their cells. And that basically will just um, ensure and see the relatedness between species as well. We can look into that information too. Um, if the chromosomes are different, so say we have less or more, that is when we may start to look at chromosomal abnormalities and what that might mean. We can identify some of this using what we call a karyotype. So a karyotype is a visual representation of all of the chromosomes or the entire genome um, of somebody. So we can pair up each of their chromosomes, so their homologous chromosomes. And this is done by staining the chromosomes and matching them based on those key features. So the size, the centromere location, um, and the banding pattern. So 
When reading karyotypes, we can look at the number of chromosomes that are present, and then we can also identify that those last two chromosomes, um, whether they are X and Y for male or X and X for female as well. If there would be, say, an extra chromosome 21, we could identify them that that individual may have Down syndrome. So it can also be used for those chromosomal abnormalities to really highlight some of those as well. Now, one process that we are going to look at is called meiosis. And this is something that you've all seen in class, but it's going to just be a little bit of a summary of what this process entails. So meiosis is the process where we are creating what we call haploid gametes. Okay, so our sex um, chromosomes are going to be involved here where we are creating sperm or egg. Okay, and they're going to have 23 chromosomes in each of those daughter cells that are created. So meiosis is a form of cell division and it occurs in sexually reproducing organisms to produce those gametes that are necessary for sexual reproduction. So um, when we have the sperm and we have the egg, they will then combine to form those 46 chromosomes that we understand human cells contain. And that um, sperm and egg combining is what we call a zygote. Meiosis will usually also take place with a single diploid cell and divide into what we call four haploid cells, each with genetically different um, chromosomes at the end. So they are all going to be unique. In terms of meiosis, it undergoes what we call two cell divisions. Okay. Before division, our homologous pair of chromosomes can be um, getting ready. We then have interphase, which is made up of a few different steps, um, which we'll talk about in a separate video. We then have our meiosis 1, which is our first cell division, and then our meiosis 2, which is our second cell division. So you can see here, this part will be our meiosis 1. We end up with two daughter cells, and then we have our meiosis 2, where we end up with our final four um, daughter cells. Now with this we have a few phases. We have interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase and then they repeat as well. Um, they involve slightly different processes so if you would like to pause the video you can have a read of what this entails. But basically the way that I like to think of it is that in prophase one that's where your chromosomes are condensing in metaphase one, that's where your chromosomes are lining up in the middle. So M for metaphase, M for middle. Anaphase is where those homologous chromosomes are going to get pulled apart. So A for apart, A for anaphase. And then telophase is where the chromosomes are going to arrive at those opposite ends of the cell. And that nuclear membrane is going to begin to be cleaved. Prophase two is where we are starting to prepare for our second cell division. So that nuclear envelope is going to begin to form, um, begin to break down, sorry, um, and the chromosomes will condense again. In metaphase two, the chromosomes will line up again along the middle, um, and the cell will prepare to pull those chromosomes apart in anaphase two. So now the chromatids are going to be separated. In telophase two, we have um, individual chromatids that now are each part of the cell, and then our cytokinesis will occur, which is the cell, um, the separation of the cytoplasm. So that cleavage process is occurring. There are two important things to note though with meiosis, and these is called crossing over and independent assortment. And this is what is going to be causing our genetic diversity. Okay, so this is what's going to allow for each of our daughter cells at the end to have um differences between them. And so with crossing over, that is basically the exchanging of genetic material that's happening. And this is where the homologous chromosomes cross over at a particular point called the chiasma. So this point here where they're crossing over, we call that the chiasma, and they sort of swap part of their DNA with each other. And this forms what we call recombinant chromatids. Um, in terms of independent assortment, this is basically the random orientation of homologous chromosomes along the metaphase plate during metaphase one, where each of our pair of homologous um, chromosomes are going to line up irrespective of the orientation of the pairs. 
So this is also going to cause some different combinations, 2 to the power of 23, resulting in about 8 million different combinations that can be formed. If you have any questions related to anything to do with chromosomes and genes and DNA and genomes, please leave them in the comments below and I'm happy to answer a couple. I hope this has provided you with a little bit of a summary of some of the things that you've learned in class or are going to be learning in class. Um, and I hope you found this useful. Thank you. Bye.